everybody, this is James, and today I broke out my Marlin Model 60 because I finally have the opportunity to bring to you guys a, a fun little comparison video. We're going to be taking a look at the Marlin Model 60, one of the best selling 22 rifles. I have an individual review on this already. I'm going to be comparing it to the Ruger 1022. This is the uh, Ruger 1022 takedown uh, that was also previously reviewed, but we're going to be comparing and contrasting. Uh, these are the two most popular 22 rifles on the market today, and they have been for decades. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this one real quick, and then we're going to get to the comparison. First introduced by Marlin in 1960, the Model 60 comes in many different variations. This is a new base model with a birch stock and blued furniture. The Model 60 is a blowback operated auto loading rifle that has a milled 3 8 inch groove for mounting a rimfire scope, but it does come with iron sights, a rear notch that is adjustable for wind engine elevation, and a front post that can't be moved at all. The Model 60 does have a last shot hole open that the Ruger 1022 does not. It also feeds from a tubular magazine. You twist to unlock and remove the magazine tube spring and you drop your ammunition in one at a time in order to top off the gun. The Ruger 1022 was introduced a little bit later in 1964 and it comes in a number of flavors to suit your taste. The iron sights are a clean white diamond notch in the rear and a gold beaded post at the front. Additionally, the 1022 is tapped and drilled for a weaver style base for your scope mounting options. But the biggest difference between the two is that the Ruger is fed with detachable rotary magazines. The gun ships with one 10 shot magazine, but larger capacities are available. But with that said, let's talk about accuracy. Alright guys, uh, next on the agenda is accuracy. And that's been a great debate between the Marlin Model 60 and the Ruger 1022 with a lot of people thinking that the Marlin Model 60 because of its uh, thicker barrel with the micro groove rifling is somewhat more accurate than the Ruger which has a shorter tapered 18 inch barrel like this one. That's what's available in most models anyway. But uh, let's go ahead and take a few shots. Uh, I have a paper target at 50 yards and uh, we can, we can be here all day talking about accuracy with 22s, but it really depends what kind of ammunition you put in the gun. Some 22 rifles like certain types of ammunition, but I'm going to be using something that works pretty well for both. This is Federal High Velocity uh, Match Ammunition, 40 grain round nose lead. Let's go ahead and take the right target with the Ruger, left target with the Marlin. All right. And now the Marlin. Alright, here are my groups with the Marlin Model 60 on the left and on the right is the Ruger 1022. I'm low and left, but I'm holding a two and a half inch group with the Marlin. On the right is the Ruger 1022. Um, I have one flyer going left a little bit, but I have one going way down on the uh, bottom right. But otherwise, that three inch group is very close to the bullseye. But taking out that one extreme flyer, I'm doing a three inch group, whereas with the Marlin I'm doing two and a half. But uh, that's not the full story. It really depends on what type of ammunition 
you use. Generally, the Marlin Model 60 is a little more accurate for me, regardless of what type of ammunition I used. But let's go ahead and repeat this drill with a different type of ammunition. All right, again on the left with the Marlin Model 60, I'm low and left with a 2.5 inch group, but on the right, I have a 1.5 inch group, very close to center. And why? Because I changed the ammunition. I changed to Federal Target Loads, which are a very close to subsonic load, about 1,000 feet per second. And it's a little more accurate um, out of the Ruger. And I decided to use it. I never actually used it in my Marlin before, but now I know. So, like I said, it depends on the ammunition. All right, now that we've conquered accuracy, now it comes down to the features, and that's what really makes or breaks these models. Now, the Marlin Model 60 has been out a little bit longer than the Ruger 1022. It's definitely an older style rifle. You have your tubular magazine, 15-shot tubular magazine, and that uh, from the factory, that is a little bit better capacity than the uh, detachable box magazine you'll find in the little Ruger in the box. But of course, you can change that game, get yourself a 25 round magazine like this one and go to town but in terms of actual hunting uh, more capacity isn't necessarily a disadvantage but if you were going to put one of these two into a home defense arrangement I can definitely see where a detachable magazine would be of a benefit but overall I like the Ruger 1022 a little more than I thought I would I've had this Marlin Model 60 for about uh, about a year, two years now, and there are a couple things I don't particularly like about it. Um, of course, you have your your three eighths inch dovetail for a rimfire scope, but there really isn't a provision for a higher powered, higher quality weaver scope. But this one's tapped and threaded, and it does come with a weaver base, so that is an advantage for the um, Ruger 1022. There's also the sights. The sights are very adjustable, but um, they are more along the crude side, whereas the Ruger, the sights are very clean, both the front sight and the rear sight, they're easy to pick up well. I found that the shoulder stock fits up to my shoulder a lot easier, whereas with the Marlin, the comb is a little bit high. When you, when you put it in the shoulder, you're going to have to bear down to get to the sights a little bit. And before we get back to shooting, we have to talk about reliability, and the real bottom line here. I've had both of these rifles for over a year now. I've put over a thousand rounds to each of them, uh, just shooting off and on, uh, messing around. And I found that the Ruger, uh, it chokes on more types of ammunition than the Marlin does, uh, especially once you get dirty. Um, I can go through more ammunition once this gun gets dirty, whereas this one needs to be taken apart and cleaned a little bit. This might just be the case study between these two rifles. But realistically, 22 rifles, after they get dirty, uh, you're going to have occasional misfires, misfeeds, and failures to eject. But I will point out, one thing about the Marlin Model 60 that I don't particularly like is it's because of that tubular magazine. If you do have a failure and you go to clear it, you could just put around, induce a double feed, and then you have to basically take out your magazine tube and then dump all the rounds out. Whereas with the Ruger, you just drop your magazine like so and get it out of there and then put it in your magazine and that's a little less troublesome than with the Marlin and there's also the fact is it's easier to handle these magazines in very cold weather than it is to drop loose rounds into a tube so if you live in a cold climate maybe the Marlin Model 60 might be a disadvantage if you're reloading the gun in the field realistically the Ruger 1022 is 
probably taking over from the Marlin Model 60 in terms of popularity these days. It is a little more expensive, but there's a lot of modularity that comes with this. Uh, you can essentially build a Ruger 1022 without any Ruger parts in it. Uh, the aftermarket for it is insane. And of course, there's different models. This particular one, of course, is that uh, takedown model that I reviewed earlier. And of course, it has that advantage with these 25 round magazines. Uh, if you're going to be having fun or putting it into some sort of tactical role uh, or what have you. But uh, it's a very good little gun. Uh, but I have to say something about the Marlin. The Marlin, it still represents something special. It's more of a working man's gun. It's a little less expensive. It's no frills. And really, you don't need to do much to it other than just mount a scope if you wanted to. Other than that, you're ready to go to town. So, bare bones hunting rifle. Bare bones hunting rifle. Or a little bit more. So it really depends what you want to do with either one of these rifles. But they're both a lot of fun. But does a no frills rifle have to shoot any worse? I'll see you next time. Enjoy your new year.